It may not win today, gentlemen, but we'll have a good time. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, I'm a big Diablo 2 player, and I uh, wanted to do a little craft to uh, make some things that were pretty close or kind of try my best to make the uh, rogue encampment kind of walls, those palisades there. Um, so if you're an, a big Diablo 2 player fan as well, or you kind of like this, you want to make something like this for your tabletop games, um, here's a little video about uh, how I made it. Hope you enjoy. So starting out, I found some uh, quarter-inch uh, diameter, and these are uh, six-inch long dowel rods. So I wanted to just cut them roughly in half. It doesn't have to be perfect. A little bit of unevenness is kind of good, some irregularity. And so one of the ends is sawn there. It's a little rougher. Those finished edges are nice and smooth. We want to taper the edge that's already kind of that we cut uh, with the saw because it's kind of rough anyway and having that nice perfectly square flat side is going to help us to stand them up straight when we go to make these walls and one of the things I do here is um, kind of whittle away at it if you had a whittling knife that would work pretty good too um, you take a good uh, good kind of swipe at it from where you want that taper to start and then I kind of cut again about halfway half of the distance to make that finer point. And once you're done there, um, I kind of just shave shave it a little bit, almost like a carrot peeler. I want to do like a really light pressure kind of shave and just hit it all over to take away that perfectly rounded look so it has some irregularity to it as well. Some chunks are fine, that's totally cool, but just to give it some flat sides and um, just kind of shave it down, make it look irregular like a real log or something that's been hewn. kind of work away at it. And don't worry if some of the chunks kind of dig in, um, but really I found I got the best results when I was able to get just light pressure and just get some quick passes on all the areas. And these are some Herstart molds uh, that I have. They're field stone molds. There's some that are just for the st standard bricks. Um, there's some that have some uh, variety of pieces like these right here. They're kind of good for stepping down and instead of making things look so blocky, put these on the end of one of those uh, rectangles and it just makes it look a little more natural, like it's some field stone that's crumbled down or something. And some little bits too, to kind of add in if I feel like I wanted to. So I just have kind of have a bag that I made from a bunch of castings, uh, so I just start um, fitting them together. And I've got this cutting mat underneath that gives me you know, a grid of one inch squares. I wanted to make these just a little bit shy of six inches so they would end up being kind of right about six inches. That way two of them kind of make a foot. Um, or that's like, that's about one character's, on average, most characters movement in D&D. So it's gonna be kind of uh, useful for a lot of different games, I think that way. That's just what I kind of like. I like to make things in six inch increments for terrain for those reasons. I kind of fit them on, just make things a regular a little character, that kind of thing. Just get close to that six inch mark. Once those are all dried up, um, just added a little glue. I wanted to try adding the glue that way so it didn't come up further than I needed to on those uh, logs that stand up vertically. But they kind of fell over when I was trying to tip it up, so I ended up just kind of winging it anyway. Just put a little glue, tack them in place where you want. Since we use that nice, since we saved that nice finished edge, they stand up pretty well while they're drying. So I get that for all of them. Some of them I do two, just one on each end, and some of them I do a third one in the middle. Again, give it a little irregularity. I started uh, by kind of taking some bamboo skewers and shaving them down, but as you can see here, they, they kind of frayed and they, 
I didn't think they were going to hold up or look very good, so I kind of bailed on that idea. So I'd advise against the bamboo skewers. I ended up just going out to my backyard and picking up some twigs that were kind of the right diameter. Um, and I liked that because then I didn't have to work at making them look irregular, shaving them down like those dowel rods. Um, they were just kind of already good. I just had to find some straight-ish uh, pieces and break them off at about those six inch marks and uh, whittled down the ends just to make them look like, again, somebody had hewn these or something. And then just uh, glue those in place. And so those are all, all done. We just kind of let them dry. I gave them a little bit of space so that I could tie some like, things that would look like some ropes, some lashings that were kind of holding them to those vertical rods. And I used just some like a, I think some some kind of twine and you just threaded it through made it look like they were kind of crisscrossed and holding strapped you know onto those vertical beams or logs or whatever it's hard to tie these things up and stay uh, in that tight little camera frame though so sorry <laughs> You can kind of see what I'm doing, got it back in frame here. Coming back through and then just crossing, crossing, that's why I left those gaps. I think that you could tighten up those gaps or just, for, you could easily just kind of skip doing these lashings and just kind of glue those logs in place, I think it's going to look fine. give them a good good tie to hold them in place and trim off that excess with some scissors and then I kind of mixed up I watered down I thinned it a little bit some PVA glue and put it right on that knot so that when that dries there's just no way it's ever going to be fraying or coming apart. It's just glued into place there. So then I coated, coated it all with just black primer. Did a little burnt umber. Just a nice dark brown would be fine on all the wood parts. And then I kind of came in with a medium gray here in a second. And just kind of did like a heavy dry brush essentially on stonework. The nice thing about those stones being made out of molds too is I made them out of dental stones so they've got a good bit of weight to them. Um, just helps them stay level on the table and not tip over or anything like that. You could make the stonework out of foam but I think it's worth either putting some kind of base underneath it then to help keep it upright or some gravel or rocks. There's a lot of good techniques out there. Maybe like uh, just something to give it a little bit of weight down there. Then um, to give it some some irregularity to make it look a little bit like it was a bunch of different trees that were kind of cut down from whatever was near them to, to do this. I painted one kind of an off-white, like an ivory or a little cream, one of them like a really yellow, orangey brown, um, and then one of them here in a second, I think I kind of go red. might mix the red in with the brown a little bit, but kind of a reddish color. We kind of want brighter colors here to make things pop because we'll be doing a, a wash here in a second. Nice like a, a brown wash, dark brown wash if we can. So dialing up the brightness of these colors, picking things out, is is going to kind of get toned down. We're going to kind of go from, from Diablo 3 style to Diablo 2 style with some, some nice heavy washes. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if we do things bright now. In fact, that's kind of what's going to make it look good. So do the same thing with stones. Have like a tan or a sandstone kind of color. Pick out some random blocks here. Uh, do the same thing with like a slate blue. You can always mix a bright blue with a gray until you get a color that you like. 
And then I did the same thing, I think, with red for some bricks as well. So I came back and I picked out the, uh, the rope with like a tan color. dry brush with a light gray and that kind of ties all those different colors together with a little stonish kind of grayish look and it kind of picks out the edges of the detail for this stonework in these casts so I just kind of hit that and I kind of tried to be neat and not get it on the on the, the wood parts because I came back in with like a medium gray to do the wood to make it look like it was weathered and you know been out for a while and that kind of picks up um, the edges, uh, the natural edges on the twigs, and then the edges that we kind of shaved down on those vertical logs or beams. So I just try to hit that. And then I just have Army Painter, like a, a dark tone, which is kind of like a black wash, and the strong tone, which is like a dark brown wash. Uh, I take the dark black, uh, it would be like an equivalent of like Null Oil, I think, from GW. Um, and we just hit all of the brickwork, the stonework stuff with that. And then we take that dark brown wash and we come back in and hit all the wood bits. Before we do that though, I forgot, um, I wanted to hit the edges of where it was kind of hewn down to make it look uh, like the, the wood that's underneath the bark. Um, so all those bits that we kind of whittled down, come back in, paint them tan. It's nice because those facets that you get there from doing the shaving, you just follow those facets and it'll look pretty good. Now once that's dried we do the, the dark brown wash and I tried to not hit the, the rope, the twine bits because I wanted that to look a little different from the tan that was at the edges of the, uh, the logs, those pieces, so I left that. And then once they're all dried, I feel like uh, they look pretty good. So here's a couple of close-up shots. Um, and you can see those, those really bright colors, they really get toned down, especially with those stronger washes. And you know, the painting a log red at first seems a little bit silly, but look at how much that dark brown wash made it look like a natural just a different different species of, of trees that were cut down. I think of that really light one, a second up from the bottom is like maybe like a birch kind of bark, or there's some trees that are just really light ashen gray or kind of whitish bark. Um, and that yellow, brown, golden brown, orangish brown, and dark brown on the bottom. This is just one that I think kind of highlights those differences, but it makes, um, it help, helps make all your stuff look um, I don't know, there's just something about it when every single, your eye, your brain kind of picks up on it, maybe subconsciously, when every single stone is the same color gray, when every single log is the same color brown, just something kind of feels a little bit off. You need a little bit of different tones or different shades of things for your brain to kind of feel like things are a little more realistic. So that's why I kind of did that. And I think that looked uh, pretty good. So maybe think about that if you're doing a project that, um, that incorporates these kind of elements. And then here's an even closer shot um, of why we did that really light whittling on those vertical logs. Because when we came in with that medium gray before we did that wash, it just catches all those edges. And so if you're if you're kind of looking at this terrain piece, if you're playing it on the tabletop, it just it looks like you know somebody hewn this ro uh, uh, log with uh, with an axe or something and just you know shaved off all the bark or whatever. Um, and so it's got those irregular kind of choppy you know, sides running all up and down there and it just it looks looks a lot more like a log than just a perfectly round dowel rod so it takes a little bit of work but I feel like it's really worth it because it looks really good in the end so there you go uh, I hope you hope you enjoyed the video hope that uh, if you're looking to craft something like this it kind of help give you some ideas uh, or, or some of the techniques with picking out the different colored wood and the rocks and stuff. Some things that now that I've done it, that if I were to be a little bit critical and think about ways to improve it, you know, again, if I were to redo them, 
I think I would f cut down the the vertical logs a little bit. Um, they look a little tall compared to some of the minis if you were going leaning a little bit more to realistic kind of scale, thinking about scale and stuff. Um, I'd maybe go like two or maybe two and a half inches instead of three that they are. I think it would just look a little bit better proportions wise on the table. Um, and then also thinking about scale and proportions and things. Um, that twine, I, I like, there's times when I like that lashing uh, of the, the logs to the, the vertical posts. Um, but I think I think it would be fine without them, especially if you feel like these these look a little bit um, rickety. And I don't mind that. I was kind of thinking that's how it would look anyway, using like real twigs and stuff like that. But if you wanted to skip that, you could stack them a little tighter, and it would a little look like a little bit more robust fortifications or palisades or walls that somebody put together for an outpost or something. So there's definitely some things some you could tweak and kind of do a little bit differently. Those are kind of some of the things that came to my mind after, right after I got done with them. Um, and if you did that and you still wanted some kind of lashing to it, maybe, uh, maybe something like a really small thread at the end. I don't think I'd want to try to paint thread, but maybe you do all the painting up and then you find like a good color thread and try to, uh, work that around and use that to, to do that lashing kind of look. Um, those are some of the things that I kind of thought about um, after I was done. If I was going to redo it, maybe consider those things. But um, overall, I think they look really good. I really like them. Um, I think they came out pretty pretty nice. And uh, Rob and I are going to use those um, probably in some Frostgrave games coming up in the future. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.